Greetings and welcome to our fifth and final lecture relating to ancient Rome, the origins of Christianity, which is our sixth unit. Today's outcome we're going to focus on Byzantium, the new Rome, which is was the capital city of the Roman Empire after Emperor Constantine took over right around 300 BC. As usual, please make sure that you have your lecture five worksheet available and are filling it out as we go along with the lecture. If you have any questions, please make sure you get a hold of me at your earliest convenience and we'll fill in any blanks that you need to. So let's get started. Byzantium, the new Rome. Setting the stage, due to Germanic invasions, the Western Roman Empire had collapsed. For nearly 1,000 years after the collapse of the Western Empire, Byzantium in the east would continue to thrive and build upon the Roman foundations. So the eastern side, the part that was set up by Constantine or ruled by Constantine was actually doing very well compared to the Western Empire which had fallen. As you can see this is how it looked. We have the two areas that were split up right down the middle here. Whoops, let's go back. Previous. There we go. We have the two areas that were split up here. Right now, as you can see, there's not a lot of empire left of the eastern or the western part of Rome. However, the eastern part in purple is doing quite well with Constantinople or Byzantium, as it originally was called, right in the middle here where this dot is. This is important to notice because where the dot is, Byzantium or Constantinople, is where Asia meets with Europe. This is a huge trade advantage for the region because anything coming out of Asia would need to go through Constantinople to get into Europe. Otherwise they'd have to go all the way basically around the Black Sea or through the Mediterranean Sea. This made it much easier with these trade routes being right here at this little peninsula here. Or actually it's an isthmus. So keep that in mind, and we'll talk uh, more about this later on as well. So, number two, why was Byzantium called the New Rome? Simple, <laughs> it was Roman. Byzantium had Roman emperors, architecture, culture, and Christianity. The Byzantine empires ruled with absolute power. They were the head is also the head of the church. There were differences, uh, there were some differences, such as they spoke Greek instead of Latin. But the Byzantines loved everything about Rome, even to the fact that a lot of their buildings, after they moved from Rome to Byzantium, a lot of the buildings were made as though they were Roman buildings. They liked Roman stuff. Simple as that. So why was Byzantium wealthier? Byzantium was located in the middle of several trade routes that allowed it to prosper. They weren't prone to the Germanic attempts or Germanic attacks like the Western Empire. The Germans were basically to the north and west of this region. There is no benefit for the Germans to try and invade them at the time. There wasn't a lot of land for the Germans to be had there. The only thing that was there was Constantinople. So there was really nothing for the Germans there to gain. Now, on to one of their bigger emperors, Emperor Justinian. Emperor Justinian takes control of the Byzantine Empire in 527 AD. He set up what today is called the Justinian Code, which was a uniform set of laws created from outdated Roman laws. So basically he modernized the legal system. It contained over 5,000 Roman laws that were still considered useful. It did break up into four parts. The Code, the Digest, the Institutes, and the Novella. They did build many churches including the Hagia Sophia which was hailed as the most splendid church in the Christian world. It is still there today. We'll actually see it on the next slide. It's a very pretty uh, church that I think you'll be impressed with. 
However, plagues and attacks caused the Byzantine Empire to fall after the death of Justonian. And here's a picture of the Hag Sophia. It is a massive church. Just look at the inside. There are no center supports holding up this massive dome. It's very, very beautiful on the inside, just as it is on the outside. A Christian empire. Christianity had spread since the eighth, uh, since the height of the Roman Empire. Emperor Constantine, as we learned, issued the Edict of Milan that made Christianity legal. The church, however, divided in about 1054 AD. The first way it was divided was the West, which was the role of Catholicism, which was in the West, uh, present-day Rome. The Pope has the authority... Oh, sorry, the services were all conducted in Latin. And the Pope has authority of all other bishops. He's the high-end guy. And priests could not marry. So those are the three differences, or the three parts of the Roman Catholic Church that differ compared to the next slide, where we talk about what's known as the Eastern Orthodox Church, which is in the East. There, their services are conducted in Greek or their local languages. The patriarch and other bishops head the church as a group, so it's not just one person in charge of the whole, um, in charge of the whole church like the pope. It's the actual the, the patriarch or the father of the church and the congregation together, not just one sole person being in charge. And the priests may be married if they choose. So these two uh, different breakaways. Uh, have their own little differences. They believe in the same Christ, the same general principles, but it's how they practice it, as well as the day-to-day -day living of the, the, the church and their faith that they disagreed in. The result, the Roman Empire dwindled into oblivion, allowing the Middle Ages to begin. However, in the East, Byzantium held on for a few more centuries, which resulted in a split in Christianity and eventually would set up a bigger conflict, Christianity versus Islam. We'll talk more about the spread of Islam in our DBQ, which we'll be starting in about a week or two, which I think you guys will enjoy. Uh, until then, uh, please take a look at the next slide that gives you some references relating to this lecture. And of course, as always, if you have any questions and would like some assistance, please let me know. You can also feel free to go back to this lesson at any time and review the different slides as you need it. And going forward, I hope you have a great day. Continue to be awesome. And I look forward to seeing you in class.